This is the River Culm in the beautiful Blackdown Hills area of outstanding natural beauty. And this film is about making a better future for this river. The river rises in the Blackdown Hills. I love the River Culm and I love the Culm Valley. I think it's really beautiful. It flows down for 27 miles through rolling Devon countryside. Wet woodland, rare butterflies, beautiful sprays of orchids. The total population is around 30,000 people. I walk, a cycle, enjoy the valley. The catchment is 100 square miles. A mix of farmland and wildlife. 87% of which is farmland. It is just beautiful. But not everything on the Calm is as good as it seems. What this water quality sample here shows, which is full of pollution tolerant, gamorous shrimps, is that the water quality here is not good. And the rest of the river's got problems with flooding, with drought, and with biodiversity loss. Well, here we are on the floodplain, right at the bottom of the catchment. And this is where all the water from 100 square miles of land is funneled down and concentrated. So anything's coming down there is affecting the water quality, but it's also affecting the water volume, and that's causing flooding issues for properties and also for the main railway line that connects the rest of the country to the southwest. The Connecting the Colm project is trying to find out the reasons for these problems and what the solutions might be. The Upper Culm is actually quite a stable river because it is fed from the green sand in the upper reaches. And the water quality coming into the river is good. And that continues for some miles downstream. And then it slowly deteriorates as various inputs come into the river, both from sewage treatment works and from agriculture. Right down there? Yeah, down here. It's really critical and becoming ever more critical that we collect water quality data and observational data. The network of citizen scientists that we're starting to build is helping us to do that. Once people are aware and they start to understand their rivers better, they realise how incredibly important they are and what rich diversity they can hold or do hold depending on the state of that river. If we have high phosphate levels for long periods of time, that leads to increased growth in algae and ultimately that can lead to reduced oxygen levels which affect the life in the river. Those problems are similar to those experienced in periods of high temperature. So the combination of high phosphates and high temperature can be very damaging to the river. Traditionally in catchment management, these problems have been addressed by large-scale organisations bringing in funding and applying the solutions without much reference to local communities. What we're doing in Connecting the Calm is bringing in the wisdom and the knowledge of local people and integrating that bottom-up approach with that top-down approach to provide an integrated solution that's much more effective. We target people in different ways and we do know that Different people are interested in different things, and people have different amounts of time and can engage with us in different ways. So it might be those one-to-one -one conversations out and about in the catchment. It might be people engaging with us online, or it might be people coming along to events that are of particular interest. So, for example, today we're running a wildlife walk across some of the Springline Myers. The project wouldn't exist without the community. It's a fully co-created project. We're on the spring line here, just above the spring line, so it continues all the way around the edge of the valley. Up on the top, above us, there is a thick layer of green sand. Yes, this is my beautiful assistant. Um, there is a thick layer of... So actually, without people sharing what they know, being actively involved in co-creating, there wouldn't be a project. Connecting the Calm is part of a European funded programme where we're working with partners across the channel in France, Belgium and the Netherlands on a project called CoAdapt, 
And we're interested in how we can adapt to climate change using nature-based solutions. We recently hosted a visit by our European partners who came over to the Colm to look at the work we've been doing on site and explore and to share knowledge and experience of all the different approaches that you can take to tackling these problems. Various project managers have been explaining what nature-based solutions they've been using and our European partners have had the opportunity to question them and to learn about the various techniques being used. Already a lot of them have been speaking to me saying they would like to use some of these same techniques, bring them home to their countries. Nature-based solutions are really about working with nature to solve problems. And there's three main tools in the toolkit. One is working with soils to make soils more porous so that rainwater soaks into the ground rather than running quickly over the surface. The second is floodplain reconnection. Our rivers are often like carved down and disconnected from the floodplain. So if we can get that water to get back up onto farmland especially, that can help reduce flood risk for properties and businesses downstream. And the third one is tree planting. And with tree planting alongside the river, we can provide ways for water to soak into the ground around the tree roots and also provide a buffer that improves water quality. And it's also good for wildlife and for people. Well, connecting the Colm, when they came and visited, uh, they identified that this was a spot which would benefit from having a wildlife scrape. To my understanding, that's just really a small depression that's allowed to get wet and to allow moisture to build up and encourage invertebrates. And basically, this is just part of our plan to increase the diversity of wildlife that's here. It's Rowena's hornbeam. Just to, we ought to give that a little knock. We're just it's slightly wonky, isn't it? Yeah. I think, like everyone, we're very worried about climate change in general. But I, in terms of our business here, we are trying to design what we do to be as resilient as possible. And I think that's where having a lot of tree cover and building up the biodiversity here gives us the best chance of adaptation over time. We don't, of course, know exactly how this part of the world will be affected, but we do know that if we invest in diversity, that that will give us the greatest resilience. I think that farmers are part of their communities and they're really keen to help in any way they can. I think that they are interested in new ideas and new projects that come along. We just generally talk about this is what you could do and then we generally have a, a good walk around the farm, have a look at what is practicable on the ground and then we talk about what they're willing to actually do and then we always talk about how that will fit in with their farming practice. I've been farming here all my life. 150 acres, family farm, divided half grassland, half arable. It's very easy to lose topsoil into the river. A, we don't want to do that because it's our topsoil and it needs to be on the field. But even more important, I suppose, it uh, gets into the river and does no good at all in the river. Uh, yeah, we can get across there. Well, there's, there's silt and debris all the way up to the bank, so the water level in full flood is going to be about yard high. The purpose is to try and slow the water in these little babbling brooks so that we can prevent all the water ending up down at heel at the same time. We're up to 10 at the moment. Uh, we've done the easy ones. <laughs> From the storm we had on Saturday night, it's already building up debris behind it. And as long as it stays there, it'll do a good job. These leaky dams are great natural solutions and we need thousands of them right through the catchment. We also need tree planting, we need to make scrapes, we need to improve soils. 
and our partners, the National Trust, are doing some great work on this down in the floodplain. We want to hold back water during flood events and make it hold water all the way through the year. We want to store more carbon with the trees that we planted. That will have an amazing impact on some of the species of uh, nature that have been lost um, over the years. So this is one of our uh, six fenced compartments that have got the uh, 30,000 trees in. They're quite closely planted. They're not protected with tree tubes, which uses very little resources. We can plant five trees for the cost of protecting one tree with a plastic tube. It's an experimental approach really to see what's the most effective way to get as many trees back in the landscape. So this is one of our three wetland scrapes which were produced uh, about a year ago now and we took 2,000 tonnes of soil out of the floodplain and this is the scrape that we're left with. It's different depths so it's providing different habitats when it does get filled up and in a flood event this will fill up, it will then top over back into the river and then these different depths will hold water for different periods of time. I'd like to think that we can demonstrate over the next five years how nature-based solutions can work in the River Colm and its catchment and how we can change them or adapt them to go forward to, to get to those aims of the 25-year blueprint. So the blueprint is the long-term investment plan for the catchment and it's an intricate plan with many moving parts and here we are in this still working woolen mill that used to be powered by the River Colm. And it's so important that this plan brings together all of the different threads of activity that are needed. And it gives funders and investors confidence that their money is going to be well spent to deliver the vision for the Colm. Delivering our vision for the River Colm is a major challenge and achieving it over the next 25 years is going to take concerted effort by organisations, communities, individuals in all parts of society. But by working together we can do it and we can give this river a better future. Mm -hmm.